Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave, waking up for a very nice and uh, normal Thursday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. As always, want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. Bitcoin doing some actual action in the last few uh, in the last few days, so it's been quite exciting. So let's actually waste no more time getting a live scene right here, right now. And where are we at? We're right around this 3860-ish area at the current moment in time. Daily yesterday closed as a uh, doji-ish type dildo, but above all the 10, 21, and 50 exponential movement averages. So Again, when looking at something like this, we're actually not getting too much from the daily. Uh, unless a Bitcoin breaks a 21 exponential to the downside or breaks above the 89 to the upside, I don't really have anything from the daily to really be looking at. If we do break above the 89 on the, on the daily, however, I would instantly get bullish for a move to about 4,200 ish area. By the same token, if we broke the 21 exponential to, to the downside, I would be getting bearish. Um, that is coming uh, coming in currently around 3780 ish area. If we were to break it, I would look for a quick move down to about 3650, and then probably some more continued continue downside after. A little bit of a bounce um, like that. However, let's go into the lower time frames as that's where all the action is happening right now. And uh, yesterday, I was looking at this. I was looking at the 3850-ish um, area to kind of be a signal for an actual breakout in the lower tr in the lower uh, time frames. I think that that's wrong. Uh, after reanalyzing this and looking at all these wicks hitting this blue box territory, which you've actually had in there for 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 just as long, uh, that seems to be where the supply zone is. And while we actually did close that last four-hour dildo above 3850, I'm not seeing the reaction that I want to see. The volume catchers down here are not what I would uh, not what I would expect for an actual move like that so again uh kind of readjusting and and just and re-looking at this i do think that there's a lot more things aligning with this uh territory between about 3880 and 3940 um, as that area actually starts to get smashed down a little bit but basically where the day the daily 89 exponential comes right in and this is actually aligning with a lot of things coming in on the higher time frames uh, as you can see right here, again, that's the 89, uh, which is actually crawling its way down and will be meeting those wicks if uh, Bitcoin fails to break this range one way or the other in the next uh, in the next few days, I'd imagine. Anyways, you do see that the 236 Fibonacci tracement is coming in right around here. You do see some nice uh, horizontal trend lines coming around from over here, going all the way back to uh, originating from November. Uh, nonetheless, also, if we go to our higher time frames, we do notice in of great importance the monthly and this is what I really want to spend some time on. The monthly 50 exponential is coming in right around this 3880-ish area, which to me is of great importance because Bitcoin broke it for the first time in its history in December, closing its first dildo below and then both opening and closing the following two, two dildos below. So as long as we are below this 50 exponential, I would be looking for this to actually be the impetus for resistance and the big battle, like if you want to call it the front line, call it the front line, but basically where the battle goes down. If Bitcoin starts to crawl its way above this area, I would be looking for a quick move uh, to basically to to last month's high at about 4,200 and probably beyond if, um, you know, if, if I'm providing my opinion, which I don't trade my opinion. But if Bitcoin were to close above that next that next sort of resistance block, I suppose you could say, then yes, I would be looking for a move into the 4,000s. Uh, of course, you know, is it going to happen like straight up overnight? I mean, you know, it happens in legs, right? But I'd imagine a quick move to 4,200 then reconsolidate and then probably try again higher if that's going to be the route. However, again, as everything is still below this area, I would be going with the former trend as the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And looking at our other time frames, that it starts to become very, 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 very visually abundant that this 3880, let's just call it 3,900. It's easier to say. 3,900, um, it's like a very one-sided conversation. Hey, I would like your opinion on this. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to call it 3,900. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, if we go down to like a three day, I think it becomes very, 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 very apparent, um, you know, where this is all coming from. Sorry. Uh, what did I want to look at on the, on the three day? Um, no, that's not what I wanted to look at. Was it the two day? Yeah, it was a two day. Uh, two day, two day, 50 exponential coming in right around here, kind of governing these lower highs as well. Um, but no, it was the four day that I'm looking at. Yeah, the four day. Four day 21 exponential coming in right around here, right around that 3900 ish area as well. We also have the 377 exponential kind of coming in that in that area, which has been governing our um, our highs for the last uh, three months, it looks like. So again, as long as we're below this area, that is the point of contention. And as we just saw on the monthly, that's where the major monthly exponential movement average coming in around. And of course, also on the two week, as the two week is very interesting to me as well. Look at this red 10 simple moon average on the two week total time frame. Bitcoin has been unable to really close above it in both open and close a weekly dildo or two week dildo above it 
for over a year. It's been all the way since um, January, essentially. It gave one try right here where it actually did close above, but quickly faded on the next, um, uh, you know, on the next selling spree. Basically, just your, your proverbial bull trap right around here, which, again, this is why I want to see both an open and close above this area, not just necessarily a, uh, a close above. You need to see both open and close. And as you can see, this was what what uh what sent the last 4200 high um down in, in a downward spiral about 500 dollars down again governing this area which it has been doing a phenomenal job for the last again over a year we're once again right around this area which is where is it coming in around 38.95 and a half on uh, on stamp so again it's another thing coming around over there we also do see these these two major exponential moving averages approach i'm oh, sorry they're not approaching each other they've quite literally crossed and they're gaining divergence away from each other so again this is a two-week dildo time frame things that happen on a two-week dildo time frame you know it's it's going to take a long time to really populate you know a month you know months and months in advance but Overall, when I look at something like this, it does tell me that this is a consolidation, which that's why I wanted to go on the three-day little time frame. The three-day little time frame is where it's a little bit more easy to see this as consolidation. You see a very orderly drop of a drop off in volume going from left to right. You see the corrective price structure, and so I'd be uh, considering this consolidation, uh, of course, in confluence with what we saw on the monthly and on the two-week, and well, of course, the weekly as well. Um, but as these two moving averages acro uh, across each other, which they already have, that has been confirmed um, like multiple ticks ago, I would be looking for this for this consolidation to have more downwards pressure upon it. Of course, not only the two week coming in hot right here, but also the monthly, which again, very, 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 very important. As the red 10 simple moving average and the yellow 21 exponential moving average approach each other, this consolidation will likely have the they will likely have the impetus for actually breaking it to the downside if it's still below the 50 exponential if and when these guys cross each other if it's above the 50 exponential when these guys cross each other then we'll probably have a run up into the you know in, into the deep 4000s i'd imagine and figure it out from there but for now with the current setup as long as we are respecting that 3900 level as resistance all these things are coming into confluence with each other so again looking at the higher time frames that is what is going to you know <laughs> that's what's going to help you not get not get caught up in the um, in the hopium, which could be founded, could be unfounded. But again, when when in doubt, I go with the former trend, and the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And the trend has been quite strong for the past over a year, um, and it can certainly remain for for a little bit more time. Let's go over to the crypto fear and greed index, which is once again ticking up. We are at a 56 right now, which uh, anytime it gets above a 50, that's that's been kind of danger zone for the past year. Um, obviously, it got all the way up to 69, which is a phenomenal number, but uh, also the second highest that we've actually seen it even get up around for you know in the last year the only other time higher was uh february of last year at the double top at twelve thousand. why is this important why am i even mentioning this well again when people get very optimistic when people get very excited in an overall downwards trend those have been very good monikers of calling tops we have just about each and every top being called by uh the crypto fear and greed index actually funnily enough um you know, going all the way back again to February, uh, fe February of last year, double top at 12,000. This was your May top at 10,000. This was your early August top at uh, 8,400. This was your early September top. This was your, I mean, basically the breakage of 6,000 before heading down to 3,000. And then of course you can see that we are above this range again. So looking at something like this, it does give us insight in what the underlying market dynamics are saying and what the, what, what some, you know, what this, what the actual sentiment is, which again has been proven to be a great ally in the past now of course when it does get super low as well does that mean that it's essentially time to be a buyer i mean this thing has stayed but it, it it is but it also it is not because it stayed below tw the 20 marker um for you know months at a time in the past uh whereas when it puts in the tops it's a quick spike usually i mean yes you do have this area here in may of last year in february of last year where it spent some time grinding the top but overall you know in comparison much more quick and that is again a signal of it being an overall bear market to begin with as far as all the macro uh, macro things that I look for, nothing's been hit off or anything like that. Doesn't mean that it can't, but again, as a trader, as an analyst, but more so as a trader, because analysts don't have any sort of accountability, and that's why I don't really care for <laughs> analysts. Um, but as a trader, you know, I need to see I need to see confirmation of something new happening first and foremost before actually changing around my overall strategy. Until then, you know what's been working for the past year is uh, is well the downwards action. So looking at something like this again. 
want to get that out very, 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 very clearly. As we are back above the 50 marker, that is where all of the dumps have originated from in the past um, in the past year. Uh, looking at the underlying mark dynamics with regards to the longs and the shorts, we can see that uh, both longs and shorts have beefed up a little bit in the overnight hours. Actually, shorts beefing up a lot more than the longs in comparison. Shorts adding about a thousand coins uh, on Finex. Longs adding about uh, I think about 500 coins since I last looked at them. But again, you know, it's it's the gross imbalance between these two. And while I don't believe we've seen, I don't believe that we've seen what I what I'd expect to see if we did have an imbalance like this for this long at these price points. It is still, again, Intel told otherwise that that is the trend. So going on over to the longs and shorts represented on uh, on TradingView, which is actually a little bit more, uh, a little bit better as it does do it in real time. The longs are in the level at this twenty four thousand level, which actually has produced some pretty massive pumps over the last year. So looking at that, that would be in direct contrast to the shorts, which also every time that they've gotten into this red box territory have initiated a major dump in the past year. I mean, again, this was your double top at 12,000. This was your top at 10,000. This was your top at 8,400. This was your, you know, breakage of 6,000. And then we are in this level right now, like right here, right now there, the balance is in favor of the longs, meaning that the sh meaning that is likely to have a bad, it meaning that's likely to have a bad result for the longs. Um, but of course, if we are to actually see the mark, the initial etchings of the mark cycle change, we would actually see a pump from these levels. That would be the first big indications for myself. Now, of course, this would be the most, this would be a very secondary type thing. We're going to go over the macro, uh, the macro things to be aware of um, in just a second. But this would be perhaps the most initial thing, but not a confirmation in and of itself, but pretty damn good. And it would make me start to maybe uh, probably make me start to be more neutral, I'd say. Uh, not necessarily bullish nor bearish, but but neutral, which, you know, if you are a more long-term uh, minded person, really, really right now is not the worst time to be neutral just because as long as Bitcoin is below the purple 200 exponential moving average and above the 200 simple moving average, there's really nothing new that's happened as far as this consolidation being resolved. If Bitcoin does the, you know, if, if you want to be super bearish, then wait for the 200 simple to be broken to the downside. That's all the way at 3,400. If you do want to be, I wouldn't say bullish, but I'd say, um, I'd say cautiously bullish maybe, uh, is if the 200 exponential broke to the upside. But when I say break to the upside, I need to see both an open and close above that 200 exponential to the upside, which is all the way at 4,100, a little bit above 4,100. So again, looking at something like that, when talking about the macro triggers, I need to see this area taken out first and foremost before looking at anything else. If Bitcoin is able to both open and close a weekly dildo above this purple 200 exponential, I change my tune, but it's not necessarily fully set in done yet. I would definitely be looking for an extended run deep into the 4,000 if that were to happen. Um, but of course, from a higher level time, time frame perspective, going back to the monthly, which again is of utter of great importance to myself, as long as Bitcoin's below the 21 exponential right here at about 5,200, I am overall bearish. And that means that Bitcoin can get all the way up to 5,200, have an extended run into that area over the course of many, many months and still get rejected from there. Um, so again, if Bitcoin were to close back above the 21 exponential moving average, I would become instantly bullish. However, just like in 2014, 2015, when Bitcoin regained the 21 exponential on the monthly, that was, you know, full bull ahead. And actually that was perfectly getting the bullish momentum as well, not being stuck in a dead trade, uh, dealing with nasty opportunity cost of being, you know, in, involved in something that actually is moving. So again, this is the 21 exponential on the monthly is something that I used in traditional marks to judge if something was generally bullish or generally bearish. And uh, as you can see over here, actually getting it pretty damn well in Bitcoin as well. Uh, the third and final and most important macro trigger, however, you're probably going to know beforehand, probably by by one of the metrics that we just spoke about, is if Bitcoin gets back above six thousand, the area that it spent so long going sideways upon. Uh, if that you know if that happens, I would be looking for well, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be bearish anymore. Like I'd have no reason to be bearish. Anyways, go down to the lower time frames. I completely forgot. I kind I kind of like glossed over them, but yes, we did hit resistance in this range. Uh, now one, two, three, four, five times. Uh, we are printing bearish divergence on the four hour uh, dildo time frame. I believe that that is all the way up. I don't believe it's on the five hour. Yeah, no, no divergence on the five hour. Three hours a little bit more exaggerated right here. Has that has that nice three stabs and we do have three hour stokes opening down as well. I think four hour stokes are hinting at a cross down. They are losing momentum, not confirmed just yet, but it is on the radar. And I believe that all lower time frames in that are, oh, actually not down. Two hour is not down. Hourly is down. 
We just closed the eight hour delta time from as well, uh, 18 minutes ago. And let's go check out what this guy's doing. Eight hour stokes getting way up there. They are losing, they are hinting at a loss of momentum, but of course still crossed up. So it's not a signal in and of itself. I'm curious what the eight hour RSI is saying, because it's looking flattish around here. Uh, but I think that that is just my, uh, my positioning within the screen. Uh, let's go over and check out what six hours are doing. Uh, six hour six hour stokes have actually been pretty damn good. Uh, pretty damn good um, indicate, indicator the last uh, the last couple of months actually. They've been getting the consolidations extremely well. You can see that it is hinting at a cross down here. This is not confirmed yet, but I'd imagine that if the next you know if Bitcoin is is at this price point or lower by it, by 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 the next six hour deal to close, which is going to be your twelve hour deal to close as well, and three hours and forty minutes, you will you will actually see that confirmed to the downside and would be looking for a test down you know around 38 uh, 20 but the difficulty of looking at these lower time frames right now is that yes you know it does look like it wants to have a pullback here i would be looking for a pullback overall um however the support that i'd be looking at is right around here 38 15 38 20 ish area so as long as bitcoin's above there you know this can all just reaccumulate even if it breaks 38 20 it's still a little bit more complicated than that as the 37 80 ish support right here which we spoke about at the very beginning of this stream is the one that 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 would actually change around the smaller time frames for now as long as bitcoin is above 37 80 i would just be looking for pullbacks rather than like reversals of course on, on, on the lower time frames, that's all we can really say. Higher time frames, we can go over everything that we just spoke about and say that there's all these resistances coming around this area, and perhaps that is, you know, that uh, uh, that is a trade to be taken. I do not have any open trades on my um, on my streamer account. I only have it on my uh, on my on my main account. I'm just playing options on my streamer account right now, which the PNL has just been going up and up. So I like that options a lot more easy on the soul. So again, check out the options playlist. I have uh, been uploading videos to that every each and every night. We just went through our first Greek last night so very exciting meeting Delta um, but yeah check that one out as uh, you can learn how to do this again this is a very 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 small position but you can see that it is you know it could still produce a respectable PL over the course of a few days um, anyways uh, yeah you know looking at something like this if we do break the 21 exponential right here at 30 38 50 closing hourly total below there I would be looking for a move to test this uh, 38 uh, 20 ish area this 38 15 support you know wherever it kind of uh, comes in around uh, in, in this range if that area gets broken then yes still 37 80 to the downside so there's a lot to chew through and that is why in the very low time frames it's you can't really make a call right here. Can't really make a call. I do see volume falling off on this consolidation. It's typically not a good sign when we're kind of in a more upwards, uh, upwards entranced um, area. Of course, hourly is going to be printing all kinds of divergences. Hourly jewel given a sell signal as well. Not a perfect sell signal, but decent enough one. Uh, although it did kind of mark it off right here. So you know you can't expect too much from an hourly jewel. However, uh, what is it? About forty buck or sorry, we went from thirty eight eighty to thirty eight. 35 in the span of uh, 30 minutes. Okay, so that's not bad. Yeah, about $45. Uh, it's a quick scalp right there. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, so yeah. All right. So, um, okay. We, we spoke about that. Let's go check out CME futures. What are the, what are they doing right now? Uh, CME futures looking pretty much the same. Uh, however, I have re reworked this chart. Oh, and I should say, by the way, as well, um, I know that I was going to have my, uh, my sale for all my programs next week. I'm actually I mean, honestly, uh, if you want to use the code right now, it, it, it is available. I'll do it before, like I'll, I'll let the code out before I actually make it fully, you know, make all the announcement, all that good stuff. Um, cause I do know that there's been a lot of people ask me about it. So I figure, you know, if you want to get started for faster, you might as well get started faster. You're just going to get better faster. Of course, I want to always, before I even get into the code, understand that my programs are not designed for 99.99999% of people out there. These are designed for people who want to do this in a more serious setting, who want to do this typically in the venue as a living. Doesn't mean that everyone in the program is doing it as a living, but most of the people are on that sort of path. So we want to make sure that everyone's kind of of the same nature in that group to kind of keep it of the same, you know, of the, of the same caliber. Anyways, if you want the code, if you are interested in getting in early before I make the actual official announcements, the code is going to be year 20, all capital Y E A R. And then the, and then the numbers two zero. 
So let that out right here. Of course, I won't make a, I won't make an official announcement for another uh, another few days or something like that. But a lot of people have been asking, so I figured, you know, what's what's the harm in letting it go a little bit earlier? Um, okay. So, anyways, uh, onto the CME futures right here. I did rework this, and um, there's two ways of looking at this, and the and the two ways of looking at this are actually quite synonymous with each other. And I believe that this is the right way to be representing this formation now in confluence with the volume signature and in confluence with the actual price action where we're finding this area right here we have filled the gap at 3900 coming all the way back from uh, late february we are currently resting right above the 382 Fibonacci trace mode but as you can see going all the way back to late november this has been our governing trend line so if cmes were to break above this 3900 level again coming back to that critical 3900 level from the monthly from the two week from the daily from the lower time frames, overhead resistance, the supply zone essentially, um, and also the 382 Fibonacci trace, or sorry, 236 on, on spot charts. This is where the resistance is, and I really and, and I really feel a lot more comfortable stating that when I can see it on CME charts, because they just they're they're a lot more clear in my in my opinion. If Bitcoin does break above here, I again I don't see anything stopping it from from from, from the early four thousands. However, as long as it's below this area, I will consider this just, you know, more rejections at a major resistance. With that said, we do have our daily stokes uh, hinting at it, hinting at across the upside. This is not confirmed just yet, but it is it's it's right around the corner. If Bitcoin does end here or higher by the end of the day, which for the end of the day for CMEs is 6 p.m. Eastern time, um, they will cross the upside and it will be and it will also be perceived as a rejection of, of getting out of the bullish control zone. So that would be very good as well. Or sorry, it would be quite bullish as well. Um, what else do we see? We also see that uh, yesterday clo opened and closed above the uh, 50 exponential. Not bad. Actually, very good. Um, what about the daily RSI on this guy? I'm not really seeing... Mm not really seen too much from, uh, not really seen anything that I can speak on right there. Uh, what about the lower time frames? What about like a four hour? Four hour, you can see rejection, rejection, rejection. Um, four hour RSI, are we getting any sort of divergences? We are not. And what's up, uh, Ro Ronald? Ronald? Verhain? Verhoven, good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Always, as always, a pleasure to uh, to meet every every new person. Um, for our not really telling us too much. For our Stokes are actually hinting out across the upside as well. Uh, what's the timer on this guy? Two hours and thirty four minutes. It is on a different timer than spot charts. By the way, uh, we do have two hours ending pretty damn soon. Two hour Stokes are up and rejecting getting out of the neutral zone. So yes, this is a more bullish setup on CMEs. Uh, CME uh, RSI for two hours still no no divergence to be found. Hourly does have divergence. <laughs> Hourly definitely does have divergence, but we actually see a lot, a lot of good things on the CME charts right now. So again, I would offer that up as a counterpoint. I'm sure that a lot of people are calling this some sort of a, uh, some sort of a rising channel, which it is. I mean, it technically is right now, but again, it doesn't really change anything. And this is why I always say, I don't care what you call something. I don't care what you call a formation. I only care how the price action reacts around the supporting resistance. And you see that this resistance is coming in and aligning uh, right, right around the major resistance that we just spoke about with regards to just about everything on spot charts as well. By the same token, uh, uh, initial preliminary support would be coming in right around here, 3850. If we break 3850 to the downside, I would be looking for a move, you know, to, t to test the lower 3800s but even then it's not really appropriate to get bearish until 3780 starts breaking if 3780 breaks then yes i would get immediately bearish for another move down um probably to 3650 bounce off there and then probably probably further down from there uh, but for now you know pressure is on so sorry pressure is on to the upside i should say anyways go check out gbdc gbdc closing the day up as well um even even taking out this resistance along the way so not bad gbdc looking um gbdc looks like it wants to take off right here as well i mean actually closing above yesterday's uh high and uh, using the using the 50 and the 10 simple as support i like that daily stokes are going to be hinting out across the upside i'd imagine that when markets open they should they should uh they, they, they should officially cross the upside uh bar i mean unless if this thing has like a major down open um but again, you know, it's for, for all intents and purposes, it does look like uh, higher time frames and lower time frames want a little bit up right here. You got four hour stokes having a fresh, well, not a fresh cross up, but, you know, get, getting some momentum up right there, taking out this resistance right here at uh, $4.61. So again, you know, uh, CMEs and GBDC both look like they look like they want up to me. Um, GBDC, you know, would have a free ride towards that $4.90 uh, region that it found over here. 
Um, again, still just lower highs until we actually take out that area from the greater picture. But remember, putting it into confluence with what we looked at on spot charts with the higher time frames, really got to start thinking ahead at that point in time, because I would really start to consider that being a, an official break if we were to really close some higher level deltas above that 3900 number. I mean, technically speaking, it's 39, 39, uh, 39, on a daily and, uh, decreasing over time. Okay. So we spoke about that. We spoke about that. We spoke about the crypto fear and greed index. We spoke about longs and shorts, Bitcoin coming down a little bit right now. So it looks like we probably will get that, that, that pullback that we're looking for. Um, again, though, is this going to be a, is this going to be a buy the dip scenario? I mean, it's going to, it's going to depend on the reaction at 38, uh, 38, 20 ish area. Um, and then if that area breaks, then 37, 80 is kind of like the area of last defense. Keep in mind though um higher time frame perspective you know to kind of flesh out the bearish case just a little bit more um what we could say is that let's go over to a four hour actually there we go and what we could say for the bearish case is that i would only be bearish if the daily 21 exponential breaks which is 3780 that's basically also the 382 fibonacci retracement if that were to happen, I would be looking for a retest of this broken trend line that we put in all the way going over here from a late November that was broken in um, in late February. That trend line would be coming in at current price action around the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement, which meets up around 3650, which I would be looking for a bounce there. However, I would imagine that the bounce would likely get faded somewhere in the in the low 3700s, and then we'd actually probably start to make our full descent downwards toward the 618 and uh, and, and prior lows, essentially. You know, just playing playing ping pong off those. Uh, supports overall though if 3780 breaks i do get immediately pretty bearish for the more immediate time frames as long as we're above it i would run with the assumption that you know it's probably just going to be a pullback um but again opinion aside that's what a technical analysis says and uh i you know again i do not trade my opinion it does look to me like things do want to come back down and, and at least test the the low 3800 numbers. Um, so again, that's why I don't have any real spot positions on my on my accounts. I'm only playing options again just for full verification. This is all I have going on right here. That's I mean that's all it needs to be. It's you know it's it's been a very easy position to be managing. Um, sold those puts when Bitcoin was below 3750. Uh, sold these calls when Bitcoin was 3850. So you know it's it's working out pretty well right now. Um, so again, when I'm looking at something like this, I want to keep in mind where the higher time frames are and then their relation to the lower time frames and how those interact. And so far, we are still finding resistance right along this 3900 area. So as long as we're below there, I would keep in contact with the with with all of the higher level dildo time frames and and use that as essentially the governing factor of my overall trading strategy, which right now is pretty, you know, like I said, right, right, right now is pretty scaled down. Just kind of, uh, just kind of waiting for this area to resolve itself. If we do take out 3780 to the downside, I'd immediately put on a position. If we do take out 3950 to the upside, I'd probably, it's probably going to be worth a long. There's, uh, again, if, if we take out, if we essentially take out this area right here, 3940, I keep on saying 3950. It's 3940 technically, and it's actually decreasing. This 89 exponential is going to come down and meet up with the 236 soon enough if uh, if Bitcoin fails to break here. But if we were to break above there beforehand, yes, I mean it, it's extremely likely to be another quick run to uh, 42 and probably beyond at that point. I mean 43 43 is is on is my personal opinion. Um, and at that point in time, then you're then you're going to start creating higher highs on the weekly. Then you got to st start thinking about the weekly 200 exponential moving average. So again, you can see all the confluences between these uh, between these areas and how can have carryover which would drastically change the picture for now you know it's i think it's pretty cut and dry anyways let's get on over to traditional markets uh traditional markets uh any of the day down again you know we spoke about this um when was it when we came into the week basically after this rejection right here at the prior high at 281 you know again the highs work you know the highs work until they don't and uh and i would say this while i do think that this has more more to come i think it's you know it's it's I would only consider this a reject, or sorry, a correction, until and, th and this is this is the beauty of this. I would consider this a uh, a correction only if, or sorry, I would <laughs> I would not consider this a reversal. I would only consider this a correction if, as long as spy is above, you know, two sixty five, two sixty four, as long as it's above this area right here, 
I don't see the reason to to be like full on reversal talk. Um, right now, you, you're about to get, or sorry, you have a daily dildo golden cross confirmed as of a couple uh, couple dildos ago, which is completely fine that we're pulling back into it. That's pretty normal. Um, it, I mean, like I said yesterday, I was looking for a uh, a pullback into about 275 to 276, just just basically between the 200 simple and the 21 exponential right right here. I think that would be a good area for 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 a little bit of a bounce. If we start violating this area, then things get more interesting as I don't see too much holding up from about 272 right here. 272, I would imagine, probably does provide a nice bounce. Um, however, if 272 is violated, then we can start getting getting on to talking about the next major level, which is 264. As long as SPY is above 264, can't really talk about reversal from a technical analysis standpoint. However, of course, you know um, everyone's everyone's entitled to their opinion. I mean, this ob very obviously is a rejection on the weekly, daily. You know, all higher time frames is a rejection, um, but it's you know it's a pullback until told otherwise. Uh, on the weekly, we can come all the way down to 272 and not really. It wouldn't even really make and wouldn't blink all that much. So again, I would really temper my expectations with something like this until, you know, until something is fully confirmed. But uh, but yes, I do think that there is more downside here. At the very least, 275 to 276. If that area gets broken, then, then the party can continue down to uh, 272 ish area. We do have our daily soaks officially getting back below the critical zone, losing their formation right here, obviously, which is what we saw a couple days ago, which is what told us, all right, time to probably not, <laughs> probably don't want to be a buyer right here. Um, daily uh, daily RSI divergence, uh, three strikes and down, trending below the exponential. Uh, daily jewel, um, giving a sell signal right here. Uh, day before for the top nice not bad so yeah i would be looking for this to have some more carry through um personal opinion is that it actually probably comes down to 270 272 in tesla's area and then we bounce off there and then that's when the that's when the real game begins but for now a nice pullback and i think that it does have some more attenuation onto it as long as it's below 279 that's that would be my disposition on this guy it's 279 the critical resistance essentially that we broke down from uh, first breakdown in a long time also the first break of the 10 simple moon average on the daily uh in a couple months since um january actually yeah exactly a couple months We've got january february now we're March. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's it for SPY. Let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing? Yeah, Mrs. Litecoin right over here. Very interesting. Um, lead the market up. Got her first daily dildo closing above this 200 exponential movement average, uh, which is a bit, which is a very big deal to me. Uh, but keep in mind though, I have not changed anything as far as the trend lines uh, from yesterday to today. And you can see right here that this is an ascending brawny wedge. You do see the proper volumes uh, statistics for this. Sorry, uh, volume signature for this. And uh, finding resistance perfectly upon the up resistance trend line of this um, all the way at uh, almost $58. So not bad. But here's the thing is that as of the current moment in time, this does look like a rejection. And we are ending below this horizontal right here at $56, which is absolutely critical because $56 was our last swing high before the ultimate dooms drop in November. So as long as it's below that, from a, from a technical standpoint, um, I would, uh, you know, I, I'd be, I'd be skeptical of it. Uh, I need to see it. I need to see it close the daily dollar above there for it to actually fully convince me. Um, a lot of day left to go, so a lot of things can happen. But uh, looking at the four-hour dollar time frame, does look to me like this thing is ready to have a pullback as well. We got some four-hour uh, bearish divergence going on right over here. Looks like a rejection of the, you know, uh, of this trend line. Very obviously, uh, what's the highest level that we can go up to and get some divergence on? What about an eight-hour? Eight-hour has. Um, a little bit of divergence going all the way back, but that's that's a little bit too far away to really uh, to to really consider. Uh, we have daily right over here. Daily daily RSI will be printing divergence if we end today's daily here or lower, or anywhere below fifty six dollars. This will be considered a shooting star dildo, and uh, and if we can confirm that as a lower high, then that will be three strikes of bearish divergence on the daily. We also have daily jewel setting up. In a more in a more selling posture, but this is not a signal yet. It would have to we'd have to at least wait a couple of days for that to really give a full on signal. Um, but I'd imagine that the second you know if you close today's daily like a shooting star dildo and then have continuation to the downside, that's probably going to be enough at, at the very least for a pullback to the 200 exponential at 50 dollars, or a little bit a little bit above 50 dollars, 50 dollars and 13 cents. Um, again, closing opening and closing a daily dollar above the 200 exponential is very 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 impressive. We haven't done that in. Going all the way back on over here. We haven't done that since quite literally last year in May. So it's been a while. And just like that song. And, uh, you know, that to me is 
very, 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 very impressive. Does it get the whole kit and caboodle done? No, it does not. I need to see a daily dollar close above $56. Um, or sorry, was it $56? Yeah, it was $56. It's right there right now. I mean, it's, it's about half a buck below. So a lot of day left to go. We're probably, we'll, we should get resolution on that before end of day. Or I mean, we will get resolution on this before end of day. But again, in an overall, in an ascending brawny wedge, which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern, has all the right markings of it. So as long as we're below this area, I would be skeptical of this. I would be very skeptical of it. But again, Mrs. Litecoin is the best argument for the bear market being over. She's the closest one to it. I mean, save for BNB. BNB has been doing its own th its own thing. Um, I don't really have anything to say right there. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I think that that's actually more fundamentally driven than anything. Um, just because you know that uh, Binance has all their you know safe Safu shit going on. <laughs> it's great. Uh, but hey, you know, fair enough. It it does have it does have one of the most unique charts in the whole market, especially of like the you know the top ten. So Mrs. Light coin you know sec uh, secondary to only that um and the closest one to getting out right now and of course fun litecoin also a little bit fundamentally driven as well as the halving date is um is right around the corner which has produced you know the impetus for for mark cycles changing around the past and funnily enough mrs litecoin did buck the trend first in 2014 2015 before bitcoin they both put in their lows at around the same time but litecoin actually dug herself out of the lows um first and foremost so again offering up both perspectives on it do i you know do i think that that's the right way to be doing it no not not quite just yet i'm not convinced um all the way just yet but you can see that there you know there there is dissent right now and there actually is good reason for dissent more importantly anyways let's get on over to the uh, to the to the other shit coins uh let's go to mr uh, buterall what's he doing 140 and a half on uh, finex again same basically the same chart as bitcoin resistance right here 144 you can see all these wicks coming in right around this range one two three four five wicks i mean you know typically the more the more times that you test the support the weaker it gets but uh this one look again looks to me like it wants to come down. Uh, bearish divergence on the four-hour total time frame. Uh, two strikes. You got four-hour Stokes crossing down as well. Confirmed. Uh, what about five-hour? Do our five-hour Stokes down? No, they are not. So fair enough. Um, and you will be getting some good crosses around here as well. But again, as long as this thing's below 144. Or sorry, was it one? Is it? Yeah, well, let's just call it 144. As long as it's below 144, that's kind of like Bitcoin at 38, uh, 3880, 3900-ish area. If that area breaks the upside, I would be looking for a quick move to 150. And probably beyond, Pro honestly, probably beyond, um, you know, maybe a quick stop right here, but I'd really be looking towards 162, something like that. So uh, you can see the potential for it. Um, however, still needs to be confirmed just first. And uh, with the lower time frames, printing divergences here, typically that does hold a lot of weight. Uh, we do have our daily stokes uh, actually hinting at a cross up as well. So fair enough, the, cro the, the, the daily stoke crosses have actually been pretty damn good. Um, over the past year for for Mr. Buterall. Now the same thing for Mr. Buterall as Mr. as as uh, as Mr. Bitcoin. 135 is a critical support. 144 is critical resistance. As long as you're within there, it's just consolidation can play support and resistance, which is uh, what, the only thing that I'd be doing right now. I would not be putting on directional trades until one of those areas was broken. Again, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but uh, yeah, you can see you can see great carry through through both of those guys. Uh, let's go check out um, what's the other one? Uh, Zcash, fucking electric coin. Uh, again, very nasty below all major moving averages this is where things get a little more hairy uh when all of the shit coins when all the top shit coins do not seem to be following the kings and it's really just litecoin that looks good right now the other ones uh bitcoin i would say neutral to slightly short-term bullish um if i had to say some uh ethereum is is kind of it's like completely neutral to maybe even slightly bearish um, but then i look at the other top shit coins and these guys are i mean this is a massive descending triangle go, uh, for the last uh, three months below all major moving averages not good bcash same thing descending triangle for the last uh for the last few months um not below all major moving averages however but you know again same sort of price structure tron cash what's he doing tron cash getting rejected right at the retest of this of this trend line which is what we've been looking at for the past you know week or so again, you know, per, you know, perfect price action pops all the way down here, tests the support, runs back up, tests the resistance, confirms the resistance and down below all major, uh, below all these moving averages. Uh, Neocash, what's he doing? Neocash, um, I mean, in, in the context of a rising channel, uh, 940 resistance, uh, 880 support, whichever one breaks first is the next move, in my opinion. Uh, EOS Cash, uh, again, closest one to Litecoin, actually. 
Um, but getting rejected by the 200, X, uh, the 200 simple moving average right here, again, in the overall context of Verizon channel, um, what about ripple cash ripples, nipples over here, getting extra sultry again, another run at this descending triangle. I mean, I'm sure that you're noticing a trend now, a lot of, a lot of the, um, a lot of the coins are in bearish patterns, you know, a descending triangle typically more often than not does break out to the downside. Now, not always, I've seen every fucking, every fucking pattern break out every goddamn which way. But, you know, it's, it's statistically more likely. Um, now, Ripple actually is holding on to the 21 exponential right here. But obviously, you know, clear rejections of this uh, 32 cent resistant. So, again, as long as, as long as Mr. Ripple's is below 32 cent, you know, not really too much to look at from the upside. If it does break above 32 cent, I would be looking for a quick move to 33 and a half. Um, but 34 and a half cent right here, this, this is a critical resistance. As long as Mr. Ripple's nipples is below there, don't want to get too excited. Uh, if it, you know, if it were to break above, I'd be looking for moves to 40 to 40 cents and probably above. Um, but for now, you know, this, this is a story at hand right now. Support coming in around 28, you know, 28 and a half cent. If that area does break, I would be looking for a move down into the, uh, into the low 20 cent high 18 or sorry, high teen cents area. Um, what about Monero cash? Uh, 51 and a quarter. Not bad. Not bad at all. Actually, actually having one of the, uh, one of the better responses out of the other shit coins. Um, <laughs> look at how arrogant I am just calling them shit coins. Apologies about that. Uh, it's just my, it's just my very, uh, endearing way of, of referring to these guys. Um, but again, you know, major resistance right here, 54 and a half dollars. As long as you're below there, just another lower high. Um, what about, uh, stellar cash? What's he doing? Stellar cash right over here. Still looking uh, pretty damn weak in the context of an ascending broadening wedge, typically a bearish distribution pattern. Uh, we are in a greater falling channel, however, which is typically a bullish pattern, but needs to break above 9.2 cents for that to be confirmed. If that were to happen, I'd be looking for a move to about 11 cents. However, for the time being, it can stay in this, it can stay in this uh, falling channel for quite some time, which... <laughs> You know, the longer that it stays in, the lower that it works itself. If it does break 8.3 cents to the downside, it would be looking for a move back down to about, you know, mid seven cents. Um, so again, you know, you, you can see the overall, uh, the overall workaround with these guys, not too good. Anyways, going back on over here to Bitcoin, I'll start to wrap up this talk. I've been talking uh, long enough already. Hourly is about to confirm its, or sorry, hourly is about 15 minutes away from conf confirming itself below the 21 exponential. The, it would be the first close below the 21 exponential in um, in a couple of days. Again, that's been governing uh, this nice run uh, so far. If we if we break it, do I do I immediately get bearish? No, I don't. I only get bearish if we break 37.80 to the downside. I do think that we are due for a little bit of a pullback right now. Due is a terrible word to have in trading and uh, technical analysis, but it does look like it wants to pull back uh support would be 38 uh, 15 if that area breaks then 3780 of course remember 3780 that critical area to the upside by the other, by the other side of the coin the other side of the token whatever the fuck the saying is um 38 39 let's just call it 3900 technically it's 3880 to 3940 if you want the whole box you want the whole box baby uh so until bitcoin breaks above there this is the resistance uh this is the resistance block if Bitcoin does break above there, I do get bullish. I, I do get short term to medium term bullish for a move into the low 4000s and then probably try as even higher from there um, after, you know, after some consolidation. But for now, uh, that's what I can say. You know, that's what I can say pretty handily right now as uh, as Bitcoin is printing divergences on the lower time frames. I do think that this is going to play out first and foremost before anything else. Um, we'll see what the reaction is uh, at the lower 3800s and uh, and assess from there. But for now, that's going to do it for today. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Really looking forward to that. Going to go eat some more ground beef, lift some weights and uh, drink some water, maybe do a little bit of trading. Looking forward to see you guys later. Uh, if not, I want to wish you a very happy, a very special uh, cryptocurrency Thursday and take care.